Welcome back. After getting familiar with the navigational elements in the dashboard and learning how to organize your cases, it is time to jump on to our next tab over here, Test Runs and Results. This page shows all the test runs that are currently active for this particular project. This is an important concept in TestRail as the application allows us to start multiple test runs using the same test cases over time. So whenever you need to test a new version of your software, you can simply start a new test run using your existing test cases. You can even create multiple test runs for different platforms, such as operating systems or web browsers you need to test against, as part of TestRail's test plan functionality. So let's start a new test run here. Here we can provide some additional information, such as the title of the test run and the user who is assigned to it. You also have the option of linking the test run to a milestone. By default, TestRail includes all the test cases of the project in the run. However, you can choose a subset of those by clicking here. This is especially useful if you are interested in testing just a particular functionality that has been changed in a new software release. You can manually select cases or even entire sections. You can also use various filters to select test cases here in the sidebar. For instance, if you don't have time to verify all our cases for the new iteration, simply ask TestRail to include the most important test cases based on the priority field. Another useful option is to select test cases based on their type. With TestRail, you can easily combine multiple filters, and if you have defined any custom fields for your test cases, you will also be able to filter your cases based on those fields. That makes the case selection filter very powerful. For this demonstration, let's include all of the test cases. Once the test run has been created, you can go to the Test Run Overview page. This page shows the overall status of the test run and the status of all individual tasks. Now, to verify a test and to enter test results, a tester would usually select a test and open it. As you can see, all of the test case details are on this page. Once a test has been performed, you can add a test result here. You can choose between various statuses by default, passed, blocked, retest, and failed. TestRail also allows you to customize your own statuses in the administration area, as you will see in a later video in this series. You can also add additional details here in the comment field. For example, you can add an error message you saw during testing. One important note, if a test fails or needs more attention, you can reassign this test to another tester or a team lead during execution who can take a look at the test. Another thing we can do is record and enter the elapsed time that we needed to execute this test. In other words, how long did we need to complete the test? TestRail can use this information to improve the time forecasts and estimates. TestRail supports several formats to enter the timestamp and even includes a built-in timer that will automatically record the test duration from when it is started to when it is stopped or the results are saved. There is also the defects field, which is used to link test results to an integrated issue or defect tracker. In general, it is highly recommended to integrate TestRail with a defect tracking tool such as Jira. We will cover more on that in the next video, including how to link issues and how to push new issues based on your test results during execution without needing to leave TestRail. What you should keep in mind for now is that if a test has failed, you can change the status and try to retest it. You can also reassign it to someone else. Once the test is verified again, we can mark the test as passed. Now all the test changes, results, comments, and attachments are displayed at the bottom of the page, and that makes it easy to track the history of a test. When you go back to the test run overview page, you can see that the status of the test case and the test run have been updated. Also, if you would like to add multiple tests at once, you can simply select multiple tests or even sections via the checkboxes and use the add test result button at the bottom of the page to assign a result. You can also use various sorting and grouping options to group tests by their status by clicking on the column header. In addition to this, there is an option to customize the displayed columns. This is especially useful if you would like to see the progress of all your tests at a glance, or if you would like to organize them based on the priority level or other attributes. Last but not least, there are some other useful options here, 
For example, you can generate print reports of your runs or export them in XML or CSV formats. Closing the run to protect it from further modifications is also possible on this page by clicking on the lock icon. Another very important aspect that every user should know is that due to TestRail's interactive user interface, you can actually change the status of your tests directly on this page. For example, you can click on the small arrow next to a test that is designed to streamline recording results and keep the full test list available. That is it for now. If you would like to learn more about TestRail's integration with Jira and various other issue, defect, and bug tracking tools, watch the next video tutorial in our series.